when stormtroopers captured a reporter. A little coffee from stormtroopers this morning. Very nice. A bunch of celebrities like as stormtroopers, iconic stormtroopers. Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper. Stormtroopers. Stormtroopers. The stormtrooper. One of the most iconic symbols of Star Wars and the Galactic Empire. But where did they come from, and how did they evolve into the Emperor's personal enforcers? In this video, we'll take a closer look at the history and evolution of stormtroopers from the Old Republic all the way to the First Order. The origins of the stormtrooper can be traced back to the Old Republic a few thousand years before the events of the Star Wars films. At the time, the Old Republic's military was made up of Republic troopers whose training and armor was based on the Mandalorians who they had been at war with several times. These Old Republic troopers had many similarities to Mandalorians, including the recognizable T-shaped helmet and full body armor. This armor was later adapted by the Kaminoans for their clone trooper army. Several thousand years later in the film Attack of the Clones, we get to see the earliest iteration of the Stormtrooper in Clone Troopers. These clones were created to serve as the Army of the Galactic Republic and were genetically engineered to be obedient soldiers loyal to the Jedi Order. They were also cloned from a Mandalorian named Jango Fett, further connecting the design of the Stormtrooper to the Mandalorian people, just as the Old Republic armor was modeled after Mandalorian armor. Created by Kaminoan armorsmiths for the Clone Troopers of the Galactic Republic, the Phase 1 Clone Trooper armor consisted of 20 form-fitting plates of lightweight plastoid alloy composite. Those plates were sealed to a black temperature-controlled bodysuit, which was pressurized, offering temporary protection against the vacuum of space. In this era, the armor carried different color combinations to denote different ranks and squads. The Phase 1 colorful armor was later replaced with the more iconic black and white armor. This Phase 2 armor was adopted by nearly all clone soldiers of the Galactic Republic by the final days of the Clone Wars. This updated armor was better suited for the human anatomy as the original Phase 1 armor was designed by the Kaminoans. The Phase 2 armor was better fit for the clones and, since all the armor was basically identical, the clones began using splashes of color and unique armor customizations to denote their individuality and personality. While the Clone Troopers of the Galactic Republic were the first generation of the Empire's Stormtroopers, TK Troopers represented the rise of human recruits instead of relying on cloning. They were trained by clone commandos as part of Project War Mantle and were a prototype armor which was based on the Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor. This first version of the Stormtrooper was called the TK Trooper and it's only had a few on-screen appearances such as in the animated series The Bad Batch. This TK Trooper design is actually the same as Ralph McQuarrie's original design for the Stormtrooper before it was changed later in the production process. The TK armor was more streamlined than the Clone Trooper armor and had a sleeker, more menacing look. However, it had several design flaws, including poor ventilation and limited mobility. To address these issues, the Empire finally developed Stormtrooper armor, as is most popular today. This armor featured improved ventilation and mobility, and it provided additional protection for the wearer. The Stormtrooper armor also included a built-in comlink and a respiratory system that filtered out harmful toxins. The term Stormtrooper actually comes from a particular group of troopers during World War I. These troopers specialized in storming trenches and often wore gas masks that could filter out toxins just as the Stormtroopers from Star Wars wear. Despite their reputation for being inaccurate and easily defeated by the Rebel Alliance, Stormtroopers were some of the deadliest fighters in the galaxy. Also, the Empire continued to develop new technologies and specialized units to improve the Stormtroopers' capabilities. One example was the creation of Scout Troopers, who were trained for reconnaissance and deployed in forests and other wooded areas. Another example was the creation of the Snow Troopers, who were trained to operate in harsh environments like the ice planet Hoth. In addition to their specialized units, the Empire also experimented with new technologies to enhance the Stormtroopers' combat abilities. One notable example was the Shadow Troopers, who were equipped with cloaking devices that made them nearly invisible on the battlefield. Another example was Dark Troopers, who were advanced battle droids that were used to attack rebel bases and fortifications. The list doesn't stop there though. The Empire built up a collection of specialized forces, including Sand Troopers, Shock Troopers, Death Troopers, Shore Troopers, Patrol Troopers, Mud Troopers, Space Troopers, Heavy Troopers, and more. Following the fall of the Galactic Empire, a number of Imperial Loyalists formed the Imperial Remnant, a group that sought to restore the Empire to power. Many Stormtroopers remained loyal to the Empire and joined this Remnant. These Stormtroopers continued to wear the classic white armor, but they often had modifications or personalized touches that set them apart from the original design. They were involved in a number of conflicts with the New Republic, and some even joined the First Order when it emerged years later. We can see these Stormtroopers in titles such as the Mandalorian, working under the warlord Moff Gideon. During this time, we see the rise of the New Republic as well as another group that would adopt the Stormtrooper once again. After the fall of the Empire, the remnants of the Imperial Army regrouped and formed the First Order. The First Order Stormtroopers were trained from birth and taken from their families to instill loyalty in the First Order. They were trained to be more efficient and ruthless than their predecessors and were equipped with updated armor and weapons. The First Order Stormtrooper armor was similar in design to the original Stormtrooper armor, but with several improvements. 
Dharma featured better ventilation and mobility, as well as a helmet that provided better visibility and protection. The armor also included a blaster-resistant shield and a built-in energy projector that could deflect blaster bolts. The First Order also equipped their stormtroopers with a new weapon, the F-11D Blaster Rifle, which was more accurate and had a longer range than the E-11 Blaster Rifle used by the original stormtroopers. The First Order also developed specialized units for specific missions, just as the Empire did. For example, flame troopers were equipped with incendiary weapons that could cause devastating damage to enemy positions. The riot control stormtroopers had specialized riot shields and stun batons, which they used to maintain order and quell uprisings. Other specialized troops included snow troopers, executioner troopers, jet troopers, scuba troopers, and more. In early drafts of Star Wars and Ralph McQuarrie's concept designs, stormtroopers were to wield lightsabers and handheld shields as common weapons rather than just the Jedi. When composing additional background information though, George Lucas changed these details and developed the more classic stormtrooper design we know today. Ever since, the stormtrooper has been an iconic symbol of the Star Wars franchise. The evolution of the stormtrooper from the clone troopers of the Clone Wars to the elite soldiers of the First Order is a testament to the creativity and imagination of the Star Wars creators. Stormtroopers continue to be a formidable force in the Star Wars universe and will undoubtedly remain a beloved part of the franchise for years to come. Subscribe for more Star Wars content, and if you liked the video, check out this one too.